kind of discontinuity here. There's a discontinuity there. There's no discontinuity in this one. The problem is in the term, like, it's discontinuous at this point. It's discontinuous at this point. But if we are going to talk about a, whether a function is continuous or not, then we start to run into some troubles here. Okay, Finding points of discontinuity here. The greatest integer function, that function again, which is maybe not really even worth thinking about for more than 30 seconds, but this, the greatest integer function is, like we said, one like how your bank account might rise. Instantly, the function jumps up to another value. You have a certain amount of money, and then suddenly you have the next amount of money. Once they pay you your interest, it doesn't slowly funnel in like pouring water into a glass. Greatest integer function, where is it not continuous? At the integers, right? These are all places where it's discontinuity. If a function is not continuous at point C, we say that it is discontinuous at C. That's pretty obvious, right? And we say that C is a point of discontinuity of F. This thing has a point of discontinuity every integer value. This is where the trouble is. Note that C not, need not be in the domain of F. The, all the values are, are defined here, right? There's all points of discontinuity here. Points of discontinuity. You, you say that the function is discontinuous at each of those values. Let me show you some different some words here. Okay, obviously the first picture there is continuous. This is continuous. There's no discontinuities there. These things are called these holes in the graph uh, are called removable discontinuities. Sometimes you see them called point discontinuities. Removable discontinuities, it might not make sense why it's called a removable discontinuity until you think about some of the other kinds of discontinuities you have. So we'll come back up to that in a second here. What do you think that's called? Starts with J. <laughs> general with a J? <laughs> Did you say general? No. Jump discontinuity. I think it's pretty obvious why it's called a jump discontinuity. Let's start spelling general with a J. That's a good idea. All this soft G stuff, that's no good. That's called a jump discontinuity. They both have this open circle. Why might this one be called a removable discontinuity, especially this one? Could I get rid of the could I get rid of the uh, discontinuity by just filling in this hole here? I could, right? Could I get rid of this discontinuity by just filling in that circle? Well, number one, it's not a function anymore because there's two values for the same thing. But that jump is impossible to get rid of. Whereas this this one up here, if you define the function to be filled in there, like if you simplified the algebra, suddenly it's continuous. This thing is an infinite discontinuity, like this. Those uh, asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, infinite discontinuities. There's no value for the middle there. There's no, there's, it's undefined there. The, this one is like a function we looked at already. This is called an oscillating discontinuity. Do you remember that function cosine of 1 over x? It had that behavior in the center. It kept oscillating more and more. Cosine of 1 over x went like this, and it did this in the center. It was undefined in the center. 
Like you can't have one divided by zero. It's undefined, but it, it oscillates up and down more and more the closer you get to zero. That one's one that we don't run into that often, so I don't want to dwell on it very much. This function here, this rational function, it's going to have some discontinuities at certain places here. Can you look at the graph of that function? I'll pause it for a while. Put the graph of that function on your calculator. Think about where you expect discontinuities to be, knowing what you know about this on your calculator or on your uh, iPhone app if you have that graphing app. I'm not trying to say one's better because they're both very old technology. Uh, but we put the put the function in here, uh, and as painful as it is, what is that function again? It's uh, you you could go if you really want to make it look nice. You could find the cube button, right? If you like that sort of thing, x cubed. Or if you want to be lazy, you can just go x x x minus seven x, right? Whatever you prefer. If that makes you uncomfortable, I'll, I'll fix it. Oops. I don't know, messed up. X cubed minus 7X minus 6. Divided by X squared minus 9. If you do zoom decimal, or sorry, if you do zoom standard, it's it's not going to look very nice, you see, because it's going to on this on a TID3 it tries to join them, right? It just tries to join every dot to every next dot. We don't want that right now. If you do zoom decimal as a starting point, the discontinuity happens on an actual pixel. The problem is you have to look farther away to find out where this is. I'm actually going to make this bigger here. I'm going to double these. 6.2. doesn't matter if it's 6.2, but actually I got to do it even more, don't I? Let's go, uh, let's go a negative 12. Can we see the whole thing then? Sort of. Okay. What do we notice then? It's got a, it's got a discontinuity here. Vertical asymptote. It's got an infinite discontinuity there. It's got this missing value here, which on this calculator, actually, this is one instance where the, the older technology might be helpful because there's a, a missing value there. If you graph it on your iPhone app, you, you, I don't think you can see the missing value because the more you zoom in on it, the closer the, you know, really you can't see a hole in the graph because it's infinitely narrow. But there's two missing, there's two problems or two places where that looks like that. So it looks something like this and oh, come on. And you have this thing up here, right? Did it go right down to zero almost? And then it's got this hole in the graph right there. This is at three, this is at negative three. How do I know that? How do I know that it happens at three? Because it says investigated around three? Because of this, right? Because of the denominator. The denominator is, is there. This is why um, you have uh, this these problems at three or these discontinuities at three. Okay? The, de the, new, the denominator is, you can factor it as x plus three, x minus three. I know there's going to be some moaning and groaning, but if you know some grade 11 algebra, you can, uh, you, you can show that you can divide that, right? You can show that there is a x minus 3 is a factor of the numerator, and it'll cancel. x minus 3 is a factor, it'll cancel. That's why this one is a hole in the graph, and this one is not. How do you factor the top? You do all that crazy division like you, like you did. You divide it and see what's left over. For something to be a factor means it has to have a remainder of 0 when you divide it, right? Do you remember this kind of division you did? 1, 0, negative 7, negative 6 x minus 3. You don't remember this? You bring this one down. Oh, I hate this. 
Uh, you do this, you get 3. You go 3 times that is negative 9. Does it not work out nicely here? What have I done wrong? Oh, I know you do. You, 1 times negative 3, negative 3, there you subtract that. You go, don't you go negative, this times this is negative 3, but you subtract that, so you get 7, negative 7 minus negative 3 is, I don't know how to multiply actually, it's 9. Thank you, sorry, this is my problem. Uh, negative 9, you subtract that, you get 2. Negative 7 minus negative 9, you get this is negative 6, you subtract that, you get 0, right? All right. This means that you have x squared plus 3x plus 2. That times this has a remainder of 0. The top of the function is that. The bottom of the function is this. I don't want us to dwell on this because in reality you don't really use a division of polynomials that often. This is a factor of the top and the bottom. That's why it turns out to be a hole in the graph. Remember I said you got to know your asymptote from a hole in the graph, right? You still didn't look that up, right, that expression? you got to know your... You look it up sometime. Start typing it in. He doesn't know his... Start typing the word asymptote, but stop after a couple letters and see what comes up, okay? It'll, it'll be one of the things that is suggested by Google. Actually, it might not be, but they don't, they don't tend to suggest <laughs> things that aren't that nice, I guess. It's not bad. Um, I don't want to dwell on this, but you notice how that there's a missing value here? If we think it should be a certain value, what you can do is say, everywhere except for 3... Let's do, let's use this function. But since there's a missing value, let's just say at 3, just make it the value it should be, right? If you go through and look at it, you can figure out that that should be the value. As in, if you cross these off and then substitute in 3, you get 10 thirds. You can take my word for it. You get 10 thirds when you substitute it in. It's an extension of that function, meaning you're filling in the missing value. Could you fill in this missing value? There's no way to fill in an infinite discontinuity. There's a way to fill this in. It just says, everywhere except 3, it's that function. At 3, let's use this value, because that's what will fill in that hole. Now for the part that is not so nice. You thought that was not so nice. <laughs> 